Hello and welcome to variation 34. This variation is about spiccato and triplets with string crossings. And in order to be able to play this variation, it's very important that you've completely mastered two particular variations beforehand. That's number 22, which is spiccato in triplets. That's this one. And variation 27, which is fast spiccato in string crossings. That's very important that you've completely mastered those before you start with this one. I'll have the links in the description for you because this variation puts both of those techniques together. Now the first preparation is for the left hand. Play this variation in double stops. important. First of all, of course, playing it in double stops will sort out your intonation and it will secure your hand position. But not only that, it will teach your left hand to work and move in blocks. And that you need to be able to do all the different bowings that you're supposed to do because this variation is not just spiccato. We have all those many sub variations where we combine the spiccato with slurs and all kinds of different bowings. And the left hand has to be ultra secure for this and your left hand has to be used to moving in blocks. So every time I practice this variation, this is the first thing I do. I play the whole variation through in double stops. Whenever I don't do that, because I don't feel like it, or because I'm lazy, I always regret it, because my left hand is never that secure. And remember, you're doing fast spiccato here, so your left hand has to be in place before the bow is on the string. So your left hand has to be used to moving in blocks, only then will it be fast enough. For the bow hand, it's a good idea to just practice this on open strings at first, comparatively slowly in spiccato. Just like in variation 27, your arm position has to be on the higher of the two strings. So if I'm doing G and E string, my arm position has to be in D string position. And for the one note on the G string, I have to flick my wrist up. I flick my wrist up. Don't do the string crossings with your whole arm because your whole arm will just not be fast enough. You do them with your wrist and you have your arm position on the higher string. Same with D and A string. Flick up the wrist. So do that slowly a few times to get used to that and of course do it on the A and E string as well. E string position your arm and for the A string you just flick up your wrist. Start slowly and then gradually speed up. And the same thing on the DNA string. And on the A and E string, of course, as well. It's important to keep your upper arm, particularly the triceps, relaxed because if you tense up in your upper arm, then you will also tense up in your hand 
and then it won't work anymore. So while you're practicing this spiccato, and you will notice there's a tendency when one speeds up, that one tenses up the triceps and relax it. While you practice it, keep on telling yourself to keep your upper arm as relaxed as possible. Another way of preparing the bow hand is by practicing also still on open strings, the same bowing, but keep the bow on the string with small detache notes. Do it in the same place as you would practice at spiccato. So you do it in exactly the same place. Use very little bow and concentrate on this movement, flicking up your hand for the lower string. The advantage of this is that you have more time and it's very helpful for concentrating on this movement. As you speed that up, you will notice that eventually the bow will want to bounce because it's at its bouncing position of the bow. The place of bow is where it bounces. So as you speed it up, you will notice it will become increasingly difficult to stop the bow from bouncing. You have to add quite a lot of weight with your first finger to the bow stick to stop the bow from bouncing. So then obviously the next step is to allow the bow to bounce. So you notice you start, you start detaché and you notice the bow wants to bounce and then you allow it to bounce. The point of this is to allow the bow to bounce, not to actually make the bow bounce because this is a semi-passive bowing, the bow bounces on its own, we just direct where it is supposed to bounce on which string. So by allowing the bow to bounce, it feels a little bit like one's losing control. That's why we also practice spiccato slowly and build up the speed with spiccato so that we can control it. But it's a good idea to get to the point where you can allow the bow to bounce and experience how the bow bounces on its own. When you put left and right hand together, if you've mastered variation 22 and 27 and you've practiced the preparation exercises, this will not be very difficult for you. Build it up in the same way. Start with slow spiccato, concentrating on the wrist movements. That's very important to do it slowly a couple of times to organize the string crossings and to bring left and right hand together. The next step, obviously, is to speed that up a little bit. Here, it can help a lot if you follow the bass line in your head. That can help a lot for actually being able to do the spiccato because the top notes stay the same and the melody goes on in the bass. I found that very helpful. It's also a good idea to build this variation up the same as you did in the preparation exercises with the small detaché notes on the string because you can concentrate on this movement even better with that. You have to make sure that you do it in the same place of bow as you do the spiccato. Right here. You have to do it in the same place, otherwise it's not going to be helpful. That 
that really organizes the wrist movement and then just like you did in the preparation exercises build up the speed and you will notice it will get increasingly difficult to stop the bow from bouncing <laughs> to add a lot of weight to stop the bow from bouncing so the next step is allow the bow to bounce by not adding the weight and that way you basically have the variation together bars 4 and 5 bars 16 and 17 and bars 20 and 21 we have a large string crossing going from the E string to the G string, which is a little bit tricky. Now there's a couple of things which can help you with that. The one thing is to just practice the string crossing to show your hand what you want it to do. Just do that a few times. Remember the string distance. The E string is about a good two centimeters away from the G string. So if you are doing spiccato on the E string at the perfect place where spiccato works and you cross over to the G string, you will be about two centimeters further away from the frog. That's often the reason why spiccato with large string crossings is tricky. So in order to not lose your spiccato place, because we only have a very small area where the spiccato actually works, and if because of the string distance we wind up further away from the frog, then we are no longer at the place where the spiccato works best. So to counteract that, what you do is in that last bar before you have that string crossing, you move a little bit towards the frog. Not very much because otherwise again you're leaving the place where the spiccato works best so that's not helpful either. But just to move a little bit, perhaps half a centimeter towards the frog. That way I showed you slowly, which is actually difficult. Uh, I showed you slowly so that you can see I moved a little bit towards the frog, perhaps half a centimeter, not more than a centimeter. And then when I reached the G string, I wasn't too far away from the frog. So that's one thing you can do. I'll show you in tempo. That's one thing which helps. The other thing is that our arm is in E string position because we just flick our hand up for the A string. Now our arm has to go from E string position to D string, G and D string position to be able to do the bowing on G and D string. That's quite a large movement as you can see and because this is such a fast variation, we're doing fast spiccato here, that movement is actually too big to be able to do in time. You can see if I do, if I try to do that I have to really hurry up with my arm to get to the G and D string position. There, you can also work against that by lifting your upper arm a little bit in the bar before the string crossing. I'll show you slowly. That was very exaggerated, but you can lift your upper arm a little bit while you're playing the notes before the string crossing, you have to think about it when that last bar starts. So when you start bar four, think about lifting your upper arm a little bit because then you don't have as far to go for the G and D string. And if you do both together in bar four, Move slightly towards the frog, not too much because that doesn't help you. You are doing this so that you don't lose the spiccato place, so don't lose it in the other direction. Just move half.
half a centimeter towards the frog and lift your upper arm a little bit, not too much, otherwise you've got an angle where you can't do spiccato anymore. Just a little bit so that you don't have such a far way to go with your whole arm. And that way you're making that large string crossing a little bit smaller. The real challenge of variation 34 is the fact that we have 17 sub variations. That is actually our real challenge because each sub variation combines either spiccato with a different slur in a different place. Sometimes it's an upbow slur, sometimes it's a downbow slur. It combines different string crossings or it combines sautier with different string crossings. So that's going to be the real challenge. It's fantastic for bow technique because if you can actually do all those 17 sub variations, then you can do spiccato and sorti in just about any string crossing combination which exists. You can combine spiccato with any combination of slurs and any combination of string crossings. Your bow technique will improve tremendously because you also become unbelievably flexible in what you're supposed to do. Even your sight reading will improve because the more flexible you are with your bow technique and being able to put in slurs in any place, string crossings, all sorts of different combinations, the more you can do that, the better your sight reading will be. Now, because there's so many sub variations, I've decided to do the sub variations in several videos because if I make one video with 17 sub variations, it will be just too long. So what I'll do is I'll do probably three or four videos with a bunch of the sub variations and move my way through the, that way. So I hope you'll be enjoying that. I hope you enjoy the original of variation 34. As always, let me know in the comments if you have any questions and happy practicing.